Okay, I'm going to show a few little stroke work techniques using this piece of base coated, base coated chipboard. All it is is just the back of one of those desktop calendar pad things and then I cut it up and use it in all kind of arts and crafts but they make good surfaces to base coat with acrylic paint and then do demonstrations on so that's what I'm going to do first thing I'm going to do is show you I'm going to show this using an angle brush I find that I do the these kind of strokes better now with an angle brush, even though I learned with a straight brush, but you can get some really good deals, oh, sorry about that, on angle brushes, just cheap ones to play with at Walmart. Like this set right here has a lot of different sizes in it, and I think it was like around six bucks. Not bad for brushes to use on rocks. This was another set. I think these were like maybe five something, almost six dollars. Same thing. Excellent for using on rocks. Actually, I had a set just like this that when I used to, to paint on the pavers for outside so that I didn't mess up my good brushes. And then this is just another inexpensive set from Walmart that just gives you a variety of sizes and types of brushes. And this one was like around five or six dollars. So you can't beat that for brushes to what I call play with because I'm not going to use my like art art brushes for this so here I've got my paint put out and I'm just using one of these styrofoam trays and I get a package of these at Dollar Tree I think it's 30 in the package for a buck I like them better than paper plates number one because I like the rectangle size it's more conducive to my space area and it I'm used to working with an actual palette and when I say palette, I'm talking about like the rectangle palette papers. So this, it reminds me of that. I, I do paper plates if I'm just in a hurry, but I like these better. You want to put paint on just one little corner or the toe corner of the angle brush. And then here you can see this was my first blending spot. So I'm just going to go into that same spot and I'm going to blend that paint. Then when I make the stroke on the surface, you can see how it goes from bold paint and fades into the water that's on the rest of the brush. And that's why it's called a shadow technique in the floated stroke because I'm using a darker color I'm blending and then I'm going to use that darker green over this lighter green to create a shaded effect and what that does it keeps that from looking flat and creates dimension within that surface all of this is a matter of leaving the right amount of water in the brush, loading paint just on the corner of the brush, doing this back and forth blending so that it causes the paint to bleed slightly across the end of the brush. And then you want to set the entire brush down. Don't Try to paint just with the corner of the brush. The reason for the angle on these brushes is so that you can put that pressure that's needed to push that paint off the bristles and onto your surface and you get that beautiful shadowed area. Practice. The three Ps, that's how it was told to me. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> 